Welcome to part two of the Maths Methods 3 and 4 revision on chapter 3, Revising Families of Functions. As I am getting slightly over saying now, obviously these questions are from the CAS book, and I'm not intending to infringe copyright, and obviously my apologies if it has, it's just to assist my current students in their preparations for their VCE examination. So thank you for any understanding you might be able to afford. Okay, so let's go on with our introduction. Uh, this will be, hopefully, a lot shorter than 32 minutes and 22 seconds, because uh, it's not a huge amount here, but it does recap something in Chapter 2 with regards to matrices. Now, matrices can be used for transformations. There's a whole table, and if you look in your textbook, then what you can find is the table on the screen at this moment in time. Thanks very much for allowing me to take this out. Um, on page 105 of your textbook is possibly the most important whereby what they're saying to you is well this here can be written in a slightly better way in the terms of a reflection in the x-axis can be written by the matrix 1 0 0 minus 1 and this here reflection in the y-axis can be written by 1 sorry negative 1 0 0 1 uh, da, 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 da. so my advice to you is look at page 105 on the textbook and just have that information to hand because it is sort of useful and the, the, the start examples are, are quite trivial on using matrices but what I want to do is come back to the concept of matrix algebra and this is a, just a quick recap of chapter 2 if you remember whereby you had something along the lines of a dot x equals c with matrix algebra uh, where you've got an A as one matrix and an X and a C and you're trying to find X, you can't divide by matrices, right? It's not possible to divide matrices, so what you have to use is use the trick of inverses. And so if you remember, you do the inverse of A, multiplied by A, multiplied by X, gives you the inverse of A, multiplied by C. A to the minus 1 multiplied by A is the identity matrix, times by X, which is the inverse of A times C and the identity times x gives you x, right? So a to the minus one times c. So that's very basically how you would find this x. And if you go back to simultaneous equations, what you were generally trying to do is you were trying to find values of x and y. Now think back to just the past video, and we were doing a lot of this. We were trying to find x and y in terms of x dashed and y dashed. How is that going to equate to what we're doing at the moment? Well, it's very, very similar. Just a, a headline on uh, on the way of using mappings in terms of matrices. Um, if you have a matrix, if you're told in a question that a function is transformed by matrix A first and then matrix B, when you do your matrix algebra, you need to remember that you do not do A times B. That is not the way you do it, all right? You need to do B dotted with A, all right? So you do B times a, all right? The matrix composition of mappings is done in that order. So just a bit of a heads up so that you don't make a mistake. But the power of this comes in transforming graphs. What do I mean by transforming graphs? Well, just one more example, all right? We've got the idea that uh, they've given you a matrix algebra, uh, and they're saying to you, a matrix is transformed by a dilation, all right, and then a translation, all right? So a dilation and then a translation. In this situation, we don't have to worry about the order because a dilation gets multiplied right by and a translation is added after. And what we're trying to say here is, well, this is my dilation, which will have a two by two matrix, multiplied by, what is this X? Well, again, that X stands for my X and Y coordinates, right? These are my original coordinates of my original graph, and then we're mapping on a two by one because you're going to have two rows and one column. And that's going to give you some mapped values of your X and Y, all right? So this is a, just a way of saying, well, look, I'm mapping these values onto this, which is no different from saying X comma Y is mapping onto X dashed, Y dashed, all right? So going back to my matrix algebra, just to check, what do I actually do? You do things in exactly the same way as you do before. This plus C has to move over first. So I have A dot X is equal to X dashed minus C. Now, if I actually had values in here, I would put those values in. 
but I don't. I want to try and find x on its own. Why? Because we're going to be given an original function. You're going to be given something like y equals x squared minus 3x and want to know what the transformation is. Like we did in the previous video, if I can get y equals in some function of y dashed and x equals in some function of x dashed, I can substitute into here and I can find my new equation. So I need to get this x on its own. How do I do that? Well, I multiply a by its inverse. And because it's in front, it has to be in front here. All right. Otherwise, you're not going to get the right answer. A to the minus 1, or the inverse of A times A, is the identity matrix. And so X becomes equal to A to the minus 1 of X dashed minus C. All right? So that is my identity matrix algebra, or my um, matrix algebra, my transformation algebra. But how do I actually use this in reality? Well, in example is always a good idea, right? But just keep, as I keep saying, just relate it back to the previous video. And if you haven't seen the previous video, I suggest watching it. So what I'm going to say is I've got a transformation defined by the matrix 1, 0, 0, 2. All right? So let's call that A. And I want to find the equation of the image of the graph of y equals x squared plus 2x plus 3. All right? So this is my transformation. And I want to find out what this function here will be transformed into. What would the new equation be? Well, this has only got one transformation. So it's nice and simple. We go back to my a times x equals x dashed. And remember, what it's saying is x is my x and y values. It's going to go on to my image values of x dashed and y dashed. And it's just going to be multiplied by a. Well, just skipping all the matrix algebra for the moment, what I now know then is that my x, y is equal to the inverse of a multiplied by x dashed, y dashed. Right, the inverse of a, we know how to find the inverse of a. If a is 1, 0, 0, 2, then what do I need to do? I need to do 1 over the determinant. Well, the determinant is given by 1 times 2 minus 0. Right, these corners minus these corners, which is 2, so that's a half. And what do I do? I swap these two over, becomes 2. 1, and the signs of these change, but as it's 0, no real worries. So there we go. So I now know that a to the minus 1, if that is a, this is a to the minus 1, or the inverse of a, so that it becomes equal to a half, 2, 0, 0, 1, multiplied by x dashed, y dashed. Right, well, a little bit of algebra. Um, maybe we'll simplify this just a second, so that's going to give me 1, 0, 0, and a half, multiplied by x dashed, y dashed. And so that gives me that x, y is equal to, and if you remember, you do row times column, row times column. So that's going to be 1 times x dashed, 0 times y, so that's just going to give me x dashed. We like that. And 0 times x dashed and a half times y dashed is just going to give me y dashed over 2. What does that mean? It's pretty much going back to what we had before. I Now I can say that x is equal to x dashed, and y is equal to y dashed over 2. And I can substitute now into this equation up here to find my transformed equation. Running out of room, so let's try and do it underneath. So y we decided was y dashed over 2. And x is just the same as x dashed, so it becomes x dashed squared, plus 2 lots of x dashed, plus 3. And so I'm going to get rid of all these dashes now. We get y over 2 is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 3. Or getting rid of that divided by 2 by multiplying everything by 2 gives me 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. And there we go. The transformed equation after that gives me y equals 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. Right? It seems difficult, but actually it really isn't. It is incredibly powerful, and it's just going back to what we did before. There are lots of questions in the textbook about you know practicing that, but hopefully this is just giving you a heads up of why you're doing it, right? This stage here, this 
x, y is equal to x dash, y dash, and just tying it in with the stuff at the start of the chapter is quite important. I'm tying this in quite quickly, or quite closely, to the textbook, because when it says determining the rule of a function for a graph, what that effectively means is, I have to say it's year 10 maths. It, it sounds bizarre, but if they actually give you the equation of a graph and two points on it, then you should be able to find, you know, the general equation of the graph. But just be very careful about things like when, you know, things have been shifted, all right? So that if you've had graphs moved up or down, you tie it in with the families and functions information so that you find those values that are important to you. That may make no sense to you whatsoever, but I think having a go at exercise 3H, for example, probably would be quite useful. And then, you know, addition of ordinates, that goes back to, again, something we did previously, where what we noticed was that if you do the f of x plus the g of x, if you add two functions, right, and in terms, you know, composite functions, then what you find out is that that's exactly the same as f plus g of x, right? So if you have two functions, you can simply add them together, and that will give you an overall function. And it can be done the other way around as well. Um, and it, it is literally just adding graphs together, all right? So if you had a function that was something like that, and you had another graph that was something, oh, this is really crazy, like that, this isn't going to work particularly well, then to get, you know, if this was function of x, uh, or f of x, and this is g of x, then if you wanted to get f plus g of x, you literally just add the values together. So whatever this value is here, which happens to be zero, added to this value here, I now know that the composite will cross through this point here. Uh, what about here? Well, this value is zero, added to this value of negative, it will cross through there. Uh, that already, you know, seems, now this is, this is where life gets tricky, you go, oh, well, these two cross, but what it's saying is, here, they both have the same value, so it is this plus the same distance again, all right, and this value plus this value would be up here somewhere, and you just add those two to. Oh, that's really bad, all right? I'm not even going to finish that line, but you would then draw a straight line between the two of them, and that would be your addition of ordinates, all right? It's just another way of saying add the two graphs together. Be a little bit careful with curves, but not too much more than that. And finally, finding the inverse of a function. I think I touched on this slightly earlier. When you're finding the inverse of a function, what you're actually doing is you're swapping the coordinates around, all right? You're literally changing the x values into the y values and vice versa. This graphically actually means you're just reflecting in the line y equals x, all right? So when you are finding the inverse, you are reflecting in the line y equals x. Not going to be easy to do here, but let's just come up with a function that may look something like that. Well, when you're reflecting in that line, what are you doing? Well, you're just mirror imaging, and it will cross here and here, all right? So these points cross, and those crossing points are actually quite important to help us find solutions. And maybe the best example to come up with, with, you know, would be an example of finding the inverse of a function. Well, if we have y equals 3 root of x plus 2 plus 4, and I want to find the inverse, algebraically really easy. Because as I say, where there's a y, you make it an x, and where there's an x, you make it a y. So that would become x is equal to 3 root of y plus 2 plus 4. And because we never really want our equations as x equals, we do a bit of manipulation. So I'd have x minus 4 is equal to 3 root y plus 2. Or x minus 4 over 3 is equal to the root of y plus 2. Or x minus 4 over 3 all squared is equal to y plus 2. Or y is equal to x minus 4 over 3 all squared minus 2, and that's a square. There we go. That is our inverse function. And if we were to plot this one here, number 1 and number 2, on our CAS calculator, you'd see that it's reflected in the line y equals x. Ooh, easy, pretty much. Inverses aren't too bad, actually. They're not too bad. You may actually be asked to find out where 
graphs intersect. You'll know the crossing points of the inverse. I have no idea why. I'm sure somewhere that would be important, walking around cold, trying to find my shopping. But, and there's a long introduction about this that I have to say, this is a revision, let's just work with it here. All right, if you are trying to find out where the points cross, then what you find out is that they can be found by either putting the function of x equal to x or f dashed of x equal to x. You can put either the inverse or the actual function equal to x and you solve and you can find points of intersection. All right? Not going to go into an example here. I'm trying to make this deliberately short, but generally speaking, you know, that's, that's a, a quick whistle-stop tour through the rest of chapter three. All right?